Hello everyone. Happy Monday. Hi guys. <laughs> it's Monday, March 29th. Um, we are in a headspace right now where <laughs> we can't think very well. So this might be an interesting one. Um, it, we might uh, pause and go off tangent, but bear with us. Hopefully you can get something out of it. Possibility we may have another child potentially joining us. Also distinctly possible. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna read some stuff. First Samuel. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yep. Yep. Five through fifteen. <laughs> Already starting. That's where we're at. <laughs> All right. So the Philistines assembled to fight Israel with three thousand chariots, six thousand charioteers, and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. They went up and camped at Michmash, east of Bethaven. When the men of Israel saw that their situation was critical and that their army was hard pressed, they hid in caves and thickets among the rocks and in pits of the cisterns. Some Hebrews even crossed the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul remained in Gilgal and all the troops with him were quaking with fear. He waited seven days, the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal and Saul's men began to scatter. So he said, bring me the burnt offerings and the fellowship offerings. And Saul offered up the burnt offerings. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived and Saul went out to greet him. What have you done? asked Samuel. Saul replied, when I saw that the men were scattering and that you did not come at the set time and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor, so I felt compelled to offer the burnt offerings. You acted foolishly, Samuel said. You have not kept the command, command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. Then Samuel left Gilgal and went to Gebeah and Benjamin, and Saul counted the men who were with him. They numbered about 600. So, what are we talking about? <laughs> um, my thought on this is... So you're waiting, right? You see your impending doom down the road. Your people are leaving you. Yep, they're scattering. They're uh, trying to find greener pastures in the desert. Mm -hmm. um, they're but, abandoning shit, yeah. basically. But like, yeah. you see your impending doom marching your way with lots of troops and everything. Um, and you're at a spot where you're like freaking out because everybody's abandoning you and you're like, it's gonna yeah. be me, one dude, versus 10,000 dudes or stuff. Math is hard right now, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so me versus this army that's coming. So what am I supposed to do? I know what I'll do. I will try and figure something out to make sure that they know like I'm not a bad guy, right? Um, but I think the, the part about that scenario that messes with me and kind of what I took away from this passage was, you know, it's really hard to wait. It's hard to be patient, mm -hmm. especially when you see something bad right around the corner. Um, and you know, I've had plenty of times in my life where like somebody tells me to do something, I try to hold on for dear life for as long as I can and then I just bail. I'm like, sorry, deuces, I'm out. Cause I know how this <laughs> movie plays out and it's not good for me. <laughs> um, but I feel like a lot of us do that. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of the easy way, it's the easy way out, it's the easy thing to do. And it's it's okay to feel that way because in times of, of uncertainty, you know it's a fight or flight type thing. And a lot of times flight is a lot easier than fight. Yeah, I agree. But in reality, you know, you really have to have faith with those things. Mm -hmm. Like in the passage, 
I mean, he's just now getting their burnt offering going. And here comes Samuel, you know. He didn't come at the same time, but he was still there within that day. Like, just a couple minutes later. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you would have held on for like 10 more minutes, dude, mm -hmm. Army would have been fine. Yeah. And we would have been okay. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's like when you're up in a corner, up against a wall, everything's crashing down around you. Try and hold on. Just a couple minutes more, maybe you'll get some direction, figure something will become clear in your mind, and you know, you know, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. Just hold on, wait for that one kind of calm yeah. thought process, um, and you'll get some direction. Um, I don't know how great this was, but <laughs> hopefully you got something out of it. <laughs> um, did you want to add anything? No, I think... I think we're good. I'm really tired right now. <laughs> um, we're going to pray. And then I realized as you were reading the passage as well, we never introduced ourselves. Hopefully you all know us. Did we? I don't we know. We said hi. We didn't. Sorry, guys. Emily. Hi. I'm Jake. <laughs> we go together. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're going to pray. And then uh, we'll see you on the other side. Uh, <laughs> bow your heads <laughs> with me. <laughs> Lord, we pray that you're always with us. We know you're always with us, but we pray that we know you're always with us. Please give us the clarity in our minds when everything's crashing down around us, that you give, you give us the peace and you give us the direction that we need to head. It's hard. It's a lot easier to, to just try and run and duck for cover sometimes, but in the end, if we straight stay true to you and your, your calling, your instructions, pray that people know that, um, that it'll all work out for them in the end, one way or another. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. See ya. Bye.